Nation supported by BT and LucasAid. You guys brought that energy. Going, you're gonna get your shot, trust me. Get involved and shape your future now. This is your show, your story, make it legendary. Yeah, you're listening now. They say they ain't heard nothing like this in a while. That's why they play my song on so many different dials. Cause I got more. And a disciplined child So when they see me Everybody barack, barack Man, I'm like a young gun Fully black, barack I cry teardrops Over the massive attack I only make hits Like I work with a racket And back Look at my jacket and hat So down to earth So down to earth I'm bringing gravity back Adopted by the major I want my family back People work hard Just to get all their salary tax Look, I'm just a writer From the ghetto Like Mallory Black Man Where the hell's all the sanity? Be the kid that no one cared about That's why you have to keep screaming till they hear you out oh, stars, a million miles away, a In life, do whatever you want You need to just keep trying new things Just constantly think, how can I use what I'm being told to improve? No knowledge is lost knowledge The person who's interviewing you wants you to do well Be your best salesperson, work out who your brand is and, and work it. I think what's really important is just never give up, you just keep on going. Pick what your passion is and pick what you're good at. It won't feel like hard work, it'll feel inspired. If man really wants to do anything, he can do anything. Dig deep, you've got this. Let's get into it. You're not alone in navigating your careers. Trust us. People like AJ Tracy, Krepton Conan, and Ray have been in similar situations, probably in a room like this. Who better than artists who have overcome barriers to success to give a bit of inspiration? Let's see what they have to say. Everyone says, never stop learning. But how do we ensure what we're learning is actually helping us with where we're trying to go as people and professionals? Hey, hey, this gets true hard, you know? Hey, what? True, 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 done, 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 true, done, da, da. Look, Tr can't, look, yeah. Huh? Look what you do, yeah? You're just easy with it. No, no, chill, chill, trust me. The way I'm going to do it is calm, fam. Oh, trust me, trust right, me. Right, cool. True, true. Done. Oh no, I've been found out. I don't know what I'm doing. Now hold on, what was that suggestion again? <laughs> it's in the cadence. Chew dan dada. So it's like, think of it as a melody. Okay. And you're just like, you're saying it. But if you think it as a melody, your voice is an instrument, you just say, chew dan dada. So it's a, it's a like, dun dun dada. All right, let me catch it. Chew dan dada. Can't tell a man about rules and batter. Can't tell man about bull man scatter. There you go, bro. <laughs> so as you can see the scenario, attitude is critical to our ability to learn. Because if we don't have the right positive mental attitude in place, it can be so easy to resist opportunities to learn and to grow. Lockdown was a really unprecedented time. What would you say that you've learned most about yourself during lockdown? Um, that I took the little things for granted, like being able to just go out and just enjoy time with my friends or going to a restaurant. Just the little things that I did regularly that I didn't think were like a massive thing, but they are actually a massive thing. Being able to have freedom is massive, you know what I'm saying? And that goes for like whether you're in trouble with the law, whether you're in a country where you can't move freely, you know, whether you're, whatever situation you're in, that being able to just have freedom and just leave your house and do something is a big deal. So that's, that's what I learned. Yeah, for sure. So you're not going to take your freedom for granted anymore. Not. You're Definitely out and not. about. 100%. <laughs> so what have you done to motivate yourself to get back on track now? Uh, what have you done to motivate myself? To be honest with you, the 
the industry that I'm in, I have no choice but to be motivated because if I'm not, if I get complacent, then I'm just going to get overtaken and just, I'll just sleep, you know what I'm saying? I'll just yeah. people forget about me. So sure. I have no choice but to keep up with everyone else. So I think everyone else doing well mm -hmm. drives me. You need competition, you know what I'm saying? There'll be no Messi about Ronaldo, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. What are your biggest goals for the future? Just making more music, making more people happy. I'm trying to do a lot more things to like change the place that I came from and, you know, in a positive way, give back to the community and hopefully just take my sound a bit more global. I'd love to go out to Japan and get people singing my lyrics. That'd be fire, so. Thank you so much for joining Thank you for having me. So we're going to talk about first impressions today. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is how important is first impressions to you guys? Very important, man. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like you've got to leave a good first impression on anyone and everyone. For me, for example, I, someone actually sat down and had this conversation and put it into to our heads. Like, if you see someone, whether you're, you know, you're a big production crew or something, everyone, even down to the runners, down to everyone, just be polite to everyone because you never know this person is going to end up being in this position later down. And, you know, if your first impression to them was you was rude, I don't like you. And then now they're in a position where they're going to come back around, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, First impressions for me, like, that's a deal breaker in a lot of situations. Like, if you meet someone and you're just not feeling their vibe, it's like, nah, I don't want to do this. I don't, I don't want to work with this person. Or I don't want to, you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's definitely important. The phenomenon is called social proof, and there's actually a lot of research into it. A 2007 study found that when individuals hold a variety of prominent values in common, they often tend to develop a sense of familiarity that renders the behavior of the others more predictable and, in turn, promotes trust. That is the key to having a strong personal brand and why it's so important. People tend to trust and like what they know, and the best way to convey who you are and what you stand for is a strong personal brand. So let's take a look at an example of a strong brand. Rihanna. Who doesn't know Rihanna? No one. No one. How would you define your personal brand? Boy, um, I would say in a nutshell, um, ambitious, um, very, you know, Afrocentric, but British at the same time, do you get what I mean? So I've always been proud of my heritage, but, you know, I was born here at the end of the day. So being British and sticking to the identity of what we are, especially within the context of music, has, has always been a big thing. Yeah, and I'd just say, I'd, I'd say ambitious, really, and really believing in the British dream and trying to have an excellence with everything I do. And what first uh, inspired your brand identity? I would probably say loads of American rappers, probably. Okay. So, but people, I, people that I guess took the business to a different level. So the, car, the likes of the Kanye's, the likes of the Jay-Z's, and people that just kind of made it a little bit more about music and made it about other things, you know, entrepreneurialism, fashion, art, all that stuff. How beneficial has networking been for your career so far? And are there any stories that stand out? Networking is, yeah, probably the most important tool, especially for someone like me coming from not knowing anyone or anything, it's a way to reach out to artists and connect. Crazily, the most popular way to connect with people is Instagram DM, which is so sad, but you know, that's how it's been. My number one tip for networking is to be prepared, be polite and persistent. I think the three Ps, which I've just given you, you know, I, I, unintentionally. It's good to be kind to everyone because you, it's just, you have to be kind to everyone. I just think spreading love and being a nice person to be around makes people want to be closer to you anyway, and you just should, because it's just nice and the world would be a much better place. We're feeling pretty inspired now. Let's dive into employability. Apprentice Nation skills leaders have given their favourite tips for levelling up your career search. Hey everyone, I'm Roxanne and welcome to this short set. In the next 15 minutes, I'm going to help you understand more about apprenticeships and help you bust some common myths. In this session, we'll look to understand the following. What are apprenticeships? 
what sectors can you work in, cash and perks, as well as how to find the right apprenticeship for you. So make sure you grab something to take notes on and let's get right into our myth busting. <laughs> on the next couple of slides, you'll see some common statements. I want you to make a note of which statements you think are true and which ones you think are false. It's no competition, but let's see how many you get right. Apprenticeships are for people who don't do well academically. True or false? This is false. Over 700,000 people did an apprenticeship in the UK last year, showing you that apprenticeships are definitely a choice. In secondary school, I got great grades, but in sixth form, my grades weren't so great, but I still managed to get access to a really great apprenticeship, showing you that apprenticeships are for people with any range of grades. Apprenticeships are available in the nuclear, fashion, tech, law, and banking industries. Do you think this is true or false? This is true. Whilst manual skilled apprenticeships such as plumbing and bricklaying have been popular over the years, apprenticeships now exist in over 170 different industries, including beauty, finance, health and food. So wherever your passion, there's probably an apprenticeship that exists for you. It is relatively easy to find an apprenticeship. True or false? This is true. Finding an apprenticeship does not need to be difficult. There are many ways to find a great apprenticeship, including speaking to a careers advisor, signing up to an apprenticeship provider, or looking online, starting with the National Apprenticeship Service. There are loads of great ways to find an apprenticeship and do a job that you love. You don't get employee perks and benefits when you're an apprentice. This is false. As an apprentice, you are an employee just like anyone else in the company. So you're eligible for company perks, such as discounts, benefits, which can also include company phones, laptops, bonuses, you name it. Remember, this is all very dependent on the company you work for. Apprentices don't earn very much. This is false. All apprentices in the UK must earn the national minimum wage, although many employers choose to pay more. You don't have access to a social life if you do an apprenticeship. True or false? This is false. When doing an apprenticeship, you'll be balancing a full-time job alongside your studies. Usually this balancing act can be done during your job, but it doesn't mean you can't have a social life. As an apprentice, you'll be entitled to time off, time to meet your friends and family, and still have time to do the things you love. Apprenticeships can lead to a full-time job. True or false? This is true. Many apprenticeships do lead to a full-time job. Employers recruit apprentices to invest in them and they'll most likely want to keep this person on as they'll become future talent for that organisation. Therefore, many employers will aim to keep apprentices on. However, if you aren't kept on or you choose to leave after your apprenticeship, apprenticeships look great on your CV and will be very helpful when finding a new role. 20% off the job training means one day a week at college. This is false. When doing an apprenticeship, your 20% off the job training does not have to be at college. It can be used in the form of workshops for your apprenticeship, webinars, attending online training, shadowing employees, etc. Essentially, anything that fuels your professional development and helps you achieve your apprenticeship standard can be classed as off the job training. You gain the same qualifications as someone who's gone to university. This is true. Many apprenticeships offer degree level qualifications, which mean that at the end of completion, you'll have a bachelor's degree in a specific field, as well as great on the job experience. So now we've looked at some common myths, let's have a look at some hard facts. What is an apprenticeship? An apprenticeship is a job where you earn and learn at the same time while working towards a specific qualification. Did you know in the first three quarters of 2019 and 2020, there were over 270,000 apprenticeship starts recorded? Apprenticeships can take anywhere between one and six years to complete depending on the qualification and lots of great companies offer apprenticeships, including BT, ITV, L'Oreal, Google, Facebook and many more. This means that there are a lot of sectors to get an apprenticeship in. Let's take a look into this some more. What industries and sectors can you work in? Apprenticeships exist in lots of different sectors, including technology, law, banking, finance, media, and more. So whatever you love, there should be a sector to work in that works well for you. The most popular apprenticeship in the UK is the Business Administration and Law Apprenticeship. The jobs that you can do while studying for this apprenticeship include social media marketing, insurance, criminal investigation, accounting, HR, which I do, and many more roles. This just goes to show, like we discussed earlier, apprenticeships have come a long way from what they used to be. Now, I know a lot of you may be thinking, what are the benefits of being an apprentice outside of getting a qualification and experience? Well, let me walk you through some of my favourite perks. 
As we discussed earlier, as an apprentice, you're entitled to full employee benefits unless stated otherwise upon joining. This means that you're entitled to lots of different perks, such as company discounts in shops or access to the employee benefit package, which can sometimes include private healthcare, free gym membership, and much more. You can also get access to store discounts through the NUS Apprentice Extra Card, which was one of my favorite things about being an apprentice. Let's not forget, you also get to kickstart your career a lot earlier than others. You'll be completely trained up for free and you'll have the chance to be a part of a unique apprentice community with others. So as you can see, apprenticeships can offer lots of perks and fun elements. And of course, all of these will vary depending on your employer. Finding the right apprenticeship for you can be very confusing, daunting and time consuming. You might even have heard the following. You'll be the youngest of your colleagues, you'll struggle to get used to the working world and you may miss out on social experiences. These are only a handful of things that can make the search harder than it needs to be. So let's go ahead and look at some of my top tips for helping you find the right apprenticeship. First and foremost, apprenticeship providers can help make your search a lot less time consuming. Next is to focus on what you love. There is no point doing a job that you do not love. You'll only grow to hate it and you won't excel at what you do. When thinking about apprenticeships, always remember to do the things you enjoy and look for similar roles that will give you those feelings. It was very important for me to do something I love, which is all about helping and assisting others, which ties very closely to my role in human resources. Doing what you love is important as work will be more enjoyable, more productive, you'll have greater job satisfaction and you'll set yourself up for success. Lastly, let's not forget to be patient and positive. You might feel a bit deflated if you don't find an apprenticeship straight away. You might even feel as if though you'll never find anything or the right job does not exist, but this isn't the case. New vacancies appear each day and always remember that this is a process. I know you can do it. I looked into apprenticeships and found out there were so many opportunities out there. It wasn't just marketing or business, there was music, there was arts, there was engineering. There were so many things that I did not know was possible. Um, I remember I decided to take an apprenticeship and the summer school that I went to did help me um, get into the place I am today. It was it's right now I'm working with an amazing media company and I just honestly want to give anyone, um, anyone who just, is not sure or wants an apprenticeship or maybe wants to go to uni I don't know but I would personally say my advice to you would be um, figure out what you like figure out what you don't like figure out what skills you have and if you don't know take the time just for yourself to figure out okay what pathways would interest you um, I just honestly feel like as well pe places like Apprentice Nation and Making the Leap people that really do care about young people um, are just amazing sources to go and find that help and find that support and I want to say people that are unsure of doing an apprenticeship if you can have the chance to get work experience get money get a qualification and have that all paid for you why would you not take that leap of faith so I just want to say um that if you do want to do an apprenticeship do it if you're not sure look into it because it's the best thing that you could do to help you discover your skills, I'm going to take you through some steps. So, step one, think about what you did yesterday or over the past week. Maybe you helped your mum set up her new iPhone and create multiple social media accounts. Now, write down all the skills that required. For example, one being confident in navigating technology. Step two, what behavioral skills did you need to learn? For example, having drive and determination to learn about the social media platforms in the first place, or having the confidence to take a risk. Step three, put step one and step two together in a clear and professional way. Record it so you can use it on your CV, LinkedIn profile, or even in an interview. For example, confident in navigating digital communication technology, coaching others and keeping up to date with digital updates. There are a couple of Apprentice Nation videos I recommend you check out specifically to CV writing. One of them being how to think beyond your grades when writing a CV and the other one being making digital skills pop on your CV.
I heard someone say something to me amazing a few years ago. They said, the more you do, the more you realize you can do. You'll hear about this thing of transferable skills. How will you know if the skills you have are transferable to something else if you don't try something new? So guys, give it a go today. Coming about life when we live this shop, the cheerleaders like Benny Hanna. My life sounds like a movie with the long tip shaped like a banana. Hey, let's go. Check out how you can take part right now on the Apprentice Nation Skills Hub with on-demand video and career advice. The more you do, the more you unlock exclusive rewards from Beats headphones to mentor sessions and even video calls with each of the artists. So get involved and shape your future now.